Is it really? So glad you're here this morning. Won't you stand up and join us? If you're joining online, welcome to Tree of Life in Pflugerville, Texas. Come on, just begin to welcome the King of Glory this morning. Begin to acknowledge his presence. He's right here. Come on, welcome the king. Give him your thanksgiving this morning. Bless his name. Release your praise, your thanksgiving, your gratitude.
Right now, there's a spiritual warfare going on. The devil is trying all he can to bring people down and to 
get them to go against God. He's trying all he can to break our schools apart right now. He's trying all he can to break our families apart right now. But guess what? When my Savior went to that cross and died for my sins, he broke that curse that the devil had on everybody who would ever claim on his name. Because my God is greater than Satan. My God is greater than your battle. He's greater than your situation right now. It doesn't matter what the devil says about you. It doesn't matter what the devil has tried to put in your family or in your life. Today is the day that you break that curse. You call out to Jesus and you believe on his name and believe in his power. Because his blood washed it all away. Here and now I draw boundaries Against every weapon that's formed The thief and his plans will pass over When he sees the red on the door I plead the blood Let's plead the blood today
it's your blood and speaks a better word speaks a better word your blood speaks a better word a better word a better word over me your blood speaks a better word a better word a better word establishing of the order of God in our lives, our families, our neighborhoods, God, our nation, our schools, our government, that divine order, God, be released upon this nation, this people, God, this geographical location here in the Austin Metroplex as well, and Father God, in our own families as well, bring forth a new fire, a fresh fire, Father God, and a new move of your, of your spirit, God, among your people in this hour, this season. In the name of Jesus, we praise and thank you, Lord, you're doing this. Thank you, Father. Praise God. You have the ushers are, can come to the front. They're going to serve us with communion. This is the first Sunday of the month, and you guys can, once they're ready for you, you can be in the file up here and receive the cup. It's got the bread and the juice both in that. Those that are watching online, <clears throat> try to find something there you can drink yourself or get a little cracker or something there to drink. Uh, thanks for that. As I'm a... Back here is from Africa a couple of days ago. It's good to be home again, back in warm Texas. But um, the good news is the Spirit of God is moving all over the earth from where I'm, I'm seeing it, even in nations where there's been a whole lot of darkness in the past. 
Yeah, just ready to feel free to start walking. You on the left, the right. Get you a little cup here. Take it back to your seat. We're going to take this all together as a congregation in a moment. But I first of all, I just want to say a few things and just uh, remind us of some things about communion. As I was praying about this this morning, you know, the Spirit of God began to show me, first of all, the picture of Joseph in prison. And it says he received a dream where the baker who makes the bread, uh, he saw birds light upon his head where he had a whole basket full of bread. And it said those birds began to take and eat of that bread and remove it from his head. And then also the cupbearer saw a vision, also a dream, where there was actually his cup was put back into his hand once again, and he was serving the king once again. And so Joseph interprets a dream for the cupbearer first. And the Bible says because of the favorable response to the cupbearer God about restoring him back to his place of responsibility, then the guy that was the baker got emboldened and he said, well, I had a dream also and told, told uh, Joseph the dream about the birds coming down and eating the bread off his head. And Joseph said something like, in three days, your head will be lifted off your shoulders. You'll be beheaded. You'll be dead. And so as I'm reading that, the Holy Spirit wants us to remind us that the Bible says the body in the flesh, there dwells no good thing. Our flesh is what killed Jesus. Our flesh is what was crucified upon the cross. The flesh is what was tortured and wounded and scarred and marred on the body of Jesus Christ himself. And even in Jesus, it was only a tent. If you actually had a real-time picture of what Jesus Christ looked like, he will look nothing like that in glory. He took on the form of a man. He was not comely in any way, the Bible says. He was not a handsome man. He was not a, a Tom Cruise type person. Just an ordinary carpenter, very rough around the edges as far as his looks would go and appearance would go, because the Bible says God didn't want to make a person that folks are drawn to by what he looks like. But when he comes back upon a white horse in a few days, months, weeks, or years, he doesn't come back in the same image as a suffering servant. He comes back as a mighty warrior. He comes back as one whose eyes are like fire, whose hair is white as wool, and who has a very appearance of light and lightning and all things that are bright and all things that are lovely and all things that are good. His appearance has changed. His glorified body is back once again. And then the blood of Christ is what has actually shed up, 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 uh, out of his body upon the ground that by the blood of Jesus, the Bible says, sins can be forgiven, washed away, removed from us as far as east is from the west. And the Spirit of God was telling me this morning that you got to realize our bodies are something that God is not that impressed with. And too many of us put too much emphasis on our bodies. We spend all, a lot of time and energy and money and, and so forth on our bodies. And God's not upset about that. But God says, don't neglect your spirit. Because the spirit man is what lives forever. This is only a tent. And in fact, our bodies are different colors. Some folks here, your bodies, your skin is light colored. Some is dark colored. Some is in between colored. And uh, men judge you sometimes by the color of your skin, or your background in the flesh. And that's why God says in your flesh dwells no good thing. Because in my sight, all people are equal as far as God's concerned. And I found the great equalizer upon the earth is no matter what nation you're born to, what color your skin is, all of us have the same color of blood flowing through our veins. You can't tell a Mexican person's blood from a Chinese person's blood. Put them side by side in a, in a vat or a cup. They'll be, you can't tell whose is whose. That's, why, that's what God wants. We cannot tell about that. We don't judge folks after the flesh. We know them by the Spirit. And so let's take this bread in our hand today, and let's just give thanks for what the body of Jesus Christ has purchased for us and done for us. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed, that healing is the children's bread. And also disease has been broken. But also iniquities have been paid for but also curses upon this earth of sweat and labor and pain and discontentment impatience anger all these things have been paid for by the body of jesus christ that died upon the cross and so he says as often as you take this cup and this bread do it in remembrance of me remember what i've done for you says god and even give thanks 
the precious body of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Father, we give thanks and praise as we lift this bread to you today. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who willfully laid down his life, who made a sacrifice, oh God, that was painful, shameful, but one, oh God, that also was effective. Effective, God, to bring forth a purchase of healing, soundness, and wholeness to us in our bodies from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. There can be soundness in us because of the body of Jesus Christ. Let's take this bread and give thanks for what Jesus has done. Now, Father, search our hearts even now. Seal oh God if any wicked way is in us, any bent. Forgive us, O oh God, of willful sins and sins of omission. Father God, give us, O oh God, a clean heart, a renewed spirit. Let your fire, God, burn inside of us once again. Bring forth, God, new life, new strength. Father, I pray, God, for a fresh anointing upon your people. And I pray, God, bring us into remembrance of the day of our salvation. And even, God, restore back the first love of those who need that in their lives once again. Help us, God, never take for granted or become familiar with churchianity. We don't clock in, we don't clock out on Sunday mornings. We are here in spirit, soul, and body. And we give thanks and praise for the blood of Jesus Christ who purchased our salvation. And brought us, God, power over death and hell and the grave. We give praise and thanks as we take this cup together in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, I'm going to sing uh, one more song of praise and worship. Among the children that are in this congregation, if one of you girls, little, little girls before I went to Africa, said that you like elephants, you can bring me an elephant, please see me um, after the service. And nobody needs to lie about that. Um, but whoever you, if you're here today, see me after service, and we're going to let you, uh, let's all stand to our feet one more time, please. We're going to sing another song of praise and worship to God as the children go upstairs and our youth stay in the sanctuary and give thanks to Him.
Fellowshiped with us here in, in the house today. Amen. Isn't it good that you have a house of the Lord to go to? Amen. And to fellowship and to freely worship Him. In, the, in Jeremiah this morning, I wanted to read out of uh, verse 11. And it says, The sounds of joy and gladness and the voices of the bridegroom and the voices who bring thanks offerings to the house of the Lord, saying... Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good. Amen. Isn't he good? And his love endures forever. For I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before me, says the Lord. And I want to encourage you here today that he wants to restore what has been stolen from you. Do you believe that? Amen. We've lost things in our lives, haven't we? And some of us are walking through that right now. But God is faithful to the point that he wants to restore what has been stolen by the enemy and that we've chosen to lose in our lives. Amen. 
We always want to blame the devil for anything. The devil made me do it, amen? The devil took this, the devil took that. Sometimes we do it willfully, amen? Sorry to say. But God is still the one who gives grace, and he will still restore, amen? Because he says, give thanks to the Lord God Almighty, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever, it's his love that endures forever. As we celebrated communion this morning, that's what we learn about was his love. That he died because he loves and he loved us so much. Amen. And so God is a restorer. He's a restorer of maybe marriages that we've lost. He's a restorer of friendships that have been messed up and he comes and restores things. You know, he may not give you that same friend, but he may restore it with a new friend. He may restore an old relationship, but he is a restorer and he does everything good and he does everything well. Amen. And we need to remember that sometimes when God restores that the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. And he is the one that we can trust in that when things have been stolen or things are gone or things are not looking right, that he can come in and restore that. He can restore financially. He can bring life where there has been drought because his word says that. His word promises that. Amen. And his character is good. So I want to encourage you out of Jeremiah this morning, keep giving thanks to the Lord for the good things he's done and for the good things he's going to be doing. Amen. This was, was a time that, it, it, you know, of Nehemiah and when things had been lost and God had to restore back to Jerusalem and Israel and restore back that which was lost and taken through lots of things. But God was faithful. He was the restorer just like he is for you. Amen. So let's keep giving thanks and trusting him that he is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can dream, think, or even imagine. Amen. Haven't you done something in your life and you were like, oh, this is just not good. And when God finishes it, you can turn around and say, that is way more than I ever thought God would restore. Amen. It's a good God. He's a good God. And he wants to restore things in our lives and build things up in his way and in his will and in his timing. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody here today. I'm glad you're with us. We welcome those online too. Thank you for being with us. And uh, we just want to say today is the day that we have, uh, the kids are going to have some fun out there at a picnic. You're welcome to join us. Any of you can join us. And uh, Miss Kristen said just after service, just go on out with your kiddos and take your lunches. There's going to be tarps and there's a tent. There's supposed to be no more rain today. Thank God. I've been watching the radar. It's clearing out. And so please uh, join us if you can. If you came along and you're like, oh, my gosh, I forgot or I don't have lunch. There's McDonald's and what else is there? Popeyes, Popeyes, the sailor man, no, Popeyes, you can grab a quick lunch for you and your kiddos, bring it back and just come join us, it's going to be a lot of fun out there, amen, all right, I want to remind you that the GOE class is picking back up this week, so be there, all right, um, Wednesday night, Bible study is returning this week, come join us, we're doing the awe of God, and it's been really, really good, so I'm excited about that. John Bevere, come at 645 and join in on a snack with us, and we would love to help have you. Shepherd's Heart Outreach Ministry is happening June the 10th, and that is next Saturday, okay? For those of you who want to participate in an outreach, you've been asking me what outreach do we do, this is a great one. Please join us if you can. It's from 8 until 10. It's in Taylor. If you have any questions, please connect with Leslie. Leslie, wait for us right there. She can give you any more details that you need, plus it's in your bulletin. But everybody meets out in Taylor at 8 o'clock. The address, I believe, is in the bulletin, or give Leslie a call, and she can put It's an amazing time of hands-on ministry, handing out food and praying for people. So this is the way that we can be God's hands extended. Amen? It's a great time. Also, um, if you want to mark your calendars for June the 20th, uh, we have a ceramics evening for 
the woman. We're going to be doing a ceramics evening on June 20th. If you go to our webpage, you can register or you can see Miss Carla. She's waving at us. She can help you register if you can't get online or you don't work that way. She will help you register and otherwise go online. It's very easy and it's going to be a fun evening. That's June 20th at 7 o'clock in Pflugerville. And then on Wednesday, June the 21st, we're going to be having a movie night here. Our series will be done. And uh, Miss Kristen said it's a big movie night. And so she'll let us know what movie it's going to be. And it's going to be at 6.30 here at the church. It's summer at the movies, all right? Be a lot of fun. All right. Um, if you want to hand out offering envelopes, that would be great. We appreciate that. And uh, a, a lot of you have been asking how, how Sarah is doing. Sarah is doing great. Thank you, God. I believe it was an intervention of God that uh, did not let her go into true labor. Sarah cannot go into labor. She does not need to go into labor. But um, she is scheduled for June the 14th. So if you want to pray, June 14th um, to have a C-section and have her baby. So put that on your calendar. But so far, so good. Keep praying that that baby stays in there and bakes as long as it needs to. Amen. And uh, that you just keep them up in your prayers. And we appreciate it very, very much. If you're watching online, you can give online. You can go to our webpage, click on um, giving. It's very easy. You can go through there and uh, give a one-time offering or uh, recurring. It's easy. Just go online. And uh, if you're a first-time guest, we have a bulletin that you have in your hands here. If you want to fill that info out, we'll just send you a letter. Thank you for being with us. And if you're online, you can click Get Connected, and we will make sure that we get with you. Okay? All right. We're going to let Pastor come up. He's back from Africa. He's back. And uh, I'm glad he's home, safe and sound. So, uh, thank you. All right, thanks for all that. This is the um, this is like the uh, entryway to summer. School's out. Come back home again. And it's nice having all those folks not driving their cars around our neighborhood uh, in the mornings, taking their children to school because we, we have a very very busy neighborhood area. And it's very, very difficult to get anywhere in the mornings. So um, hopefully the children, your children, grandchildren are going to have a summer of growth in spiritual realms. And I really encourage you guys, find books for them, find DVDs, movies, things they can do that's uh, entertaining, of course, but also at the same time, something to feed their spirit. It'll be good to have that. And uh, like Cheryl mentioned, I just came back from Kenya, Africa on Thursday night, had a good trip there. Just really good things took place. Uh, we had two conferences there with like we had 400 and some pa pastors and leaders come together in both places together and uh, one of them was called uh, Maui Rock which is about a 30, 30 or 45 minute drive from a place called Nakuru in the middle of Kenya had to drive there from Nairobi our team was uh, Curtis Baker and Ron Bishop and his wife Christy came along and uh, those guys did a great job as well we just saw God do tremendous things among the people uh, and there was just a real a revival spirit, especially the second place in Nakuru. Um, the Spirit of God has really broke out there prophetically, and just uh, people were, were very much encouraged. Uh, we're one of the first Americans that have come to them for some time since COVID hit. And the first place was out in Mount, Mount Rock. Uh, the Spirit of God broke loose in healing after one service. And one guy, a, a man, a pastor, um, had a broken vertebrae. His back was totally messed up for decades. God instantly healed him with nobody even touching him. We didn't even touch him, lay hands on him. The Spirit of God just came down and just instantly healed that man. And he was dancing and jumping around like in the Bible and bending over and just couldn't believe how much, uh, what the miracle was that God did in his body. And it kind of showed us that you don't always have to have um, official altar calls for people to get healed. Just start speaking the Word of God, just have, start believing God in faith, believing. And sometimes things just start breaking out among you um, like it did there in that place as well. So they were Glad that I got to come. Thanks for loaning me out to the world once in a while and had a good service last Sunday morning. I'm going to try to get some video clips together um, if I can get Dave Sanders' help. I'm going to volunteer him without even, even talking to him um, for next Sunday to show you some of the clips there of their worship and a little bit of the conference and some pl places we were at. And so thank you to Jack and thank you to Cheryl and all you folks that helped out. There were volunteers while I was gone. The place is still standing and still looking good. Hope you guys have had a good few weeks as well yourselves. Um, I'm starting to ask, um, who's the person that actually took and, and mowed all this grass behind here in this parking lot behind this uh, church? 
Somebody know who, who cut that down? Oh, it was Luke. Well, God bless Luke. That was a tremendous job. Went right down to the dirt and just did a tremendous job getting all that, all that junk mowed out back there. That saves me from doing that. And uh, appreciate all you guys that volunteer. Anybody that feels led to do something like that without even asking, just go ahead and go for it. Uh, there's, there's still weeds and trees, and I need to kill some uh, poison ivy. So my second job in the church is landscaper, um, off and on. But I enjoy the getting out there and getting some fresh air. Um, so moving on here, um, you mentioned the Wednesday night service with John Bevere's DVD. We'll be serving food for that at 645, so try to come if you can to that. Also, you guys enjoyed Mike Hammonds last week. I think he had a tremendous message. And uh, thanks for coming to that service and listening. And that is a real anointed man of God. He got saved during our rock seminar day, days. So it's always good to see lasting fruit. You know, that's back in 1980 or so. We, had, we saw him get saved. And now he's a pastor of a church. And that's just one of other stories of what God did to bring lasting fruit from that era of our lives and our ministry time. And um, that's all I really have to think of myself. So I'm glad the ushers go ahead and come to the front. I didn't have anybody written down this week for having a birthday or anniversary. So if I'm missing anybody, if you're having a birthday today or this week, just raise your hand if I miss somebody. As far as anniversaries go, did I miss any anniversary people? Okay, well, God bless all you folks watching online. If it's your birthday or your anniversary, God bless you. And uh, let's just pray over this offering today as well. Now, again, in the natural realm, summertime can be a lean time for churches. Uh, folks forget sometimes to give and to sow and sometimes build. The needs aren't always met like they are in the other nine months of the year. So choose to be faithful here on June the 4th, first start of summer. I'm going to keep on releasing the tithes, the offerings, and needs will be met in this church by you doing that as well. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we do give you thanks and praise for the blessings upon our nation of America. Uh, thank you, God, for our tremendous infrastructure. Thank you for all the many freedoms we have. And thank you, Lord God, for our air conditioning and all the many things of life that makes our life so much better than what it really could be. We bless, O oh God, the city of Austin together today. We say this city is blessed. This city is prosperous. This city is going to be a spiritual city on a hill more and more in the days ahead. We pray, God, you bless what is sown in this offering in this church today to be a blessing to your kingdom, Father, not just here, but also, God, beyond the walls of this church building. Father, we also, if right now, I pray blessings upon the people of the congregation that they receive raises, bonuses, promotions. They receive favor, God, and guidance, not because they're greedy, but because they want to be a channel of blessing, God, for folks to take and receive what you give to them in surplus by the power of your Spirit. Now, Father, we ought right now also today, we, we agree that the devourer is rebuked in Jesus' name, and we are wise stewards of all that you give to us, and that debt is broken off of us in Jesus' name. Though inflation happens around us in the natural realm, we agree today, God, there's inflation on provision for me in the name of Jesus. Now, use what is sown this day for your glory. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ushers. And we got Damian Hancock. We had a birthday or had a graduation party for her son, Dylan, yesterday. God bless Dylan, all those that are going to be graduating here into new things. And so if you have your Bibles, um, I'm going to read one verse here in a moment on this series here called Overcomers. Hebrews chapter 1, I'm going, to turn, I'm going to read one verse there in a moment, and I'm talking this morning here about angels among us, angels among us, and we're talking about angels, angelic, what they do, why they're here, and the first question I'm going to ask you guys is how many folks are glad you have ears? Yes. Aren't you glad God gave you ears? Do, do you need your ears? Yes. We, have, we, have, we have swords here, but if you, you got ears, you're glad you got a nose, you're glad you have hair, you're glad you have fingers. All, you're glad because of why? Because you need them. Amen? Yes. Well, also realize God does not put angels in heaven and on earth just for the fun of it. God knows you need them. Yes. You need angels. Amen? God makes nothing that man does not need. It's for man's not just pleasure, but also his needs of life. And so on this trip, the Holy Spirit dealt with me about how I'm going to release some things today before we leave this place here, about how to take and, and let, see the angels working among us more and more as God wants them to do, because they really are here among us. Even right now in the atmosphere of this room, there's angels around us, and I believe you guys did bring your angels with you, and I believe they're rejoicing during praise and during worship time, and I believe they're also here to take and serve and, and do things among the people before we leave this place even today. Um, many stories are always shared on these trips here. We drive for hours together. We, we spend time in lunches and dinners and breakfast together with a team. 
And all these guys have stories, and especially Curtis Baker and Ron Bishop, they've got many stories, I guarantee you that. And so I'm a great listener, and I listen to all the stories these guys were telling. But one amazing story that Curtis Baker told, I had heard before, happened eight months ago. He, I understand he, he told us that one of my weaknesses is I don't look at my gas gauge on my vehicle very much. And so I've run out of gas several times in our married life, getting my wife very aggravated when I do that in an inopportune moment. Eight months ago, he's, I was driving from San Antonio to Houston on I-10, and I ran out of gas um, out there in a rural area before I got to Houston, and I was two miles from the nearest gas station. And so his, his wife named Joe said, okay, you've done it again? Yeah, I've done it again. <laughs> and so he opens the door up. He says, I'll just wait here, please, honey. Just be here safe, and I'll be back as fast as I can. Two miles from now, there's a gas station. I'll bring the, I got a gas can. I'll bring some gas back, and we'll, we'll be okay, I think. So he walked about um, several hundred yards, and all of a sudden, a car pulled up behind him on the shoulder of the road of I-10, and it was a, a kind of a little older lady in her early 60s, early 50s, kind of short and uh, gray hair and so forth, pulls up right behind Curtis and says, um, you need some help, don't you? He goes, yeah. I said, yeah, I talked to your wife back there, Joe. Joe's doing okay. She's fine. But she said, my husband's up there. I'm walking along the road. He might need some help getting some gasoline. Could you please help my husband out? And so um, I heard, I'm here to help you out. He goes, well, okay. So he, he jumped in the car, drove him to the gas station two miles away, got the gasoline, came back to where his car was at. And as he did that, the windows rolled down in the car, of a little old lady's car. And um, she waves at Joe. Joe waves back, smiles real big. And she takes off. And, and, and uh, Curtis has his uh, car and he's getting full of gas. And, and so Joe says, uh, who was that? And she goes, he goes, well, what do you mean? Wh who's who? The lady that was waving at me out of the car there, that was smiling and, and looking so happy and so forth. And Curtis said, she's the lady that stopped and talked to you. And uh, also one, one, one more thing I'm leaving out here is that the, on the way to the gas station, the woman in the car driving Curtis said, your wife is okay. I want you to know that. And also I want to tell you this, don't let this happen again. <laughs> uh, quit doing this. And that's one more thing that was said. Now they're back to Joe again. And Joe says, I've never seen that lady before in my life. Never seen her in my life. And that totally floored Curtis. You realize an angel had stopped for him, disguised like a little old lady, and uh, took him to the gas station and also rebuked him, <laughs> gave him a message, a message from the messenger, don't do this again. Stop doing this. Angels are among us. Angel, the Bible says angels are around us. Sometimes we're entertaining angels and don't even realize we're even doing that. And angels are supernatural beings, and they're here for a purpose and for a reason for our life. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. It says, Are not all the angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? All that are in this room today, I think almost all you guys are, gonna, are already lined up to inherit salvation. Amen? Well, the Word of, Word of God says, Hebrews 1.14, that you are in line by God to have angels helping you out. Because the word minister means to serve. To serve you until Jesus Christ comes back or until you die. Angels are among us. The scripture indicates angels are made by God to serve. Psalms chapter 91, verse 11 and 12 says this. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now that verse, of course, was used for Jesus. Satan used that verse to tempt Jesus to, to, to jump off the pinnacle of the temple and tempt God. And Jesus, of course, used other verses to disprove what he was saying because it was out of, in a selfish way, did not want to do that. But the Moffat translation says this, For God puts you under his angel's charge to guard you wherever you go. Berean translation says, For he gives his angels orders regarding you to protect you wherever you go in your life. Isn't that good news? There are angels assigned to you to be with you wherever you go in this life. And we need those angels all the time. There's also Bible evidence. We have our own personal angel. It's found here in Matthew chapter 19, or I'm sorry, 18, verse 10. It says, Take heed 
that you do not despise one of these little ones, says Jesus. For I say to you in, that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Notice it says there that their angels, your children have angels. And when you get to be about 29 years old or 30, 45 years old, those angels don't leave you. They're assigned to you as long as you're alive on this earth. Because the Bible says God's giftings have no repentance. Angels are a gift to you. Amen? And they have no repentance. They don't leave you. They're always with you. As a matter of fact, that's why it's so important to pray for your children. If they backslide or turn back from God, realize their angels are still around them. And as you start praying for them, their angels will start causing divine coincidences to start happening. To draw them back to Jesus. Amen? Angels are smart. They can do that. They have a uh, they have an ability beyond what you've got in the supernatural realm. So it goes on here. I'm going to give some take-home points here. But one of my, my own personal stories here, you might have heard this before in the past if you've been here long enough, is whenever Cheryl and I were on vacation in Colorado back in probably about 30 years ago, my dad was in our station wagon, our Buick, and so was my brother-in-law and my sister. And at that time, uh, we only had Daniel, our son. Uh, Kristen wasn't born yet, praise God, And um, at, at that point. And because what happened there was I was driving the Buick LeSabre station wagon with all the people in there, my dad in the front seat, and I was going to put on the gas on a side road and go onto the main highway, and I couldn't see very well because for, for all the bodies around me. And so instead of my foot hitting the foot feed and the gas pedal, my foot hit the brake. And when my foot hit the brake, a great big giant F550 whatever pickup pulling a great big giant RV came flying by at about 60 miles an hour right in front of us. I would have got it broadsided by that pickup had my foot hit the gas pedal like I was aiming for. I believe there was an angel in that, in that car at that moment watching, moving my foot to the brake and not the foot pedal. Amen? And I can, say, I can tell you story after story how God has shown up in things like this to protect us and save our lives or save serious injury from us as only He can do. So let's get some points to write down and take home today as well and think about also. Number one is this, the origin. Where did angels come from? The origin of angels. Where did they come from? Well, Psalms chapter 148, verses 2 through 5, or 2 and 5, it says, Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. So they are created beings. God made angels like God made you and I. Now realize that Satan is an angel, but a fallen angel. God made him. Never think that Satan is equal to God. Satan's a created being. Anything God made is so far below God, there's even no comparison between what God makes and who God is. Amen? So never see Satan as equal to God. He's nowhere near equal to God and never will be. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 says, For by him God... All things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were made through Him and made for Him. That means angels are made by God and they're made for God, but praise God, they're also made for God's people. They've always been involved in praise and worship. Angels praise God. Angels worship God. Angels love to sing songs of the Lord. In Job chapter 38, verses 6 and 7, it says, So what were its foundations fastened? Talking about the creation of the world. Or who laid the cornerstones of the earth at the creation? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now those two terms there, morning stars and sons of God, are both words in the Hebrew language for angelic beings. In my research, in my study, I think it's in Ezekiel 28, it says that Lucifer was called the morning star of heaven. And that word morning star by a musician that I heard decades ago, he said actually is a word that, that comes from halal, which means to praise and worship God. And that word morning star talks about a chief angel anointed by God to lead worship in the heavens O morning star, son of the dawn, O Lucifer, the enlightened one, the reflector of the light, how you have fallen to the earth, what Ezekiel 28 says. And so the morning stars 
Many theologians believe were a class of angels under the command of Lucifer, and they all were singing praise and worship to God and leading the angelic host to praise and worship in heaven every single day. And then the sons of God were those who were shouting for joy as they were being led in praise and worship by the morning stars of heaven. Now you can agree with that, disagree with that, but I'm just telling you again, angels love praise, they love worship, and love to worship God. One man named uh, Kim Clement, who died, and we've known him for decades, also back in the days when he was in, in South Africa, he said the Holy Spirit told him that um, when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven with the angels under him, a great void was left in heaven of those praisers, worshipers. And so the question was asked, well, now who fills, what fills that void? And the answer is, you do. We now take the place and fill the void Lucifer left in heaven. That's why Jesus said, if they don't praise me and praise God, the rocks will cry out and worship him. Something that God made is going to praise him and worship him. Amen? So let it be us. And that's why I believe when we come, we come together here, when Greg and all the worship team leads us in praise and worship, they are leading you and your angels in praise and worship at the same time together to the Lord. Amen? We're filling that vacuum and void out up, I believe, that Lucifer left when he was cast out of heaven. Number two is this, angels have supernatural power. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 18 that one angel cast a millstone into the sea and one third of the earth's population died. That's one angel doing that. So they've got supernatural power that no man and no bomb is God upon the earth. In Isaiah 37, the ministry of Hezekiah is talked about. He was threatened and surrounded by the armies of Assyria and greatly outnumbered and under siege. And he prays out to God. He fasts, and they're crying for God to bring deliverance to them. And finally in Isaiah 37, verse 36, it says, Then the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000 soldiers just like that. That's power. Amen. That is supernatural might. One angel. 185,000 Assyrians dead in one second. When people, it says, arose early in the morning, there were the corpses and all were dead. That's a lot of power. Amen? And then Matthew chapter 26, verse 53, Peter cuts off the ear of the servant of the high priest. And Jesus didn't like it very much. And he re rebukes Peter again for the millionth time. And says, or do you not think that I cannot now pray to my father? He will provide with, for me with more than 12 legions of angels. He could wipe the entire world out with 12 legions. I, think, I understand the legions 1,000. So he's saying with 12,000 angels, I can call them down right now and put an end to this earth. But I choose not to do that because I am the suffering servant who came here to sacrifice my life for the, for the good. So the good news is you have an angel that has lots of buddies around them. And whenever you face this earth here, God protects you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Jesus Christ loves you. But they've got messengers called angels that are going to help you out. Amen. When you make mistakes like trying to put your foot on the gas pedal and kill your whole family in Colorado. Amen. The Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And because your flesh is weak, we need angels on our side. They do things for us. Amen? We have angels who do a better job of protecting us than does a secret service for our president. Our president sometimes stumbles. Our presidents. Angels don't do that. We need angels. Amen? They'll protect us. Moving on here. Number three, there are good and there are bad angels. Good and bad. Revelation chapter 12, verse 8 and 9, it says this, but it says, they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. Talk about these fallen angels. So it says, the great dragon, the devil, Satan, was cast out. That serpent of old, called the devil and called Satan, who deceives, notice this, the whole world, he was cast to the earth and his angels with him. They were cast out of heaven with him. That's where the bad angels come from. They were under the command of Lucifer. When he fell, they fell. And now they're called demons. Or they're called unclean spirits. And they're bad angels. And they've not, they're not going to change. 
You're not going to see in the Bible anywhere where angels repent and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and go from bad to good. They just stay bad. I don't know why that is, but it's just the way it is. So, where did bad angels come from? Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, it says, The tail of Satan drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them down to the earth. This is all a symbol here again of the dragon, Lucifer, a third of the angels are cast down to the earth, unclean spirits and demons are among us. The good news is two-thirds are still on our side, plus we have Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many folks know demons are outnumbered? Satan's outnumbered. Don't be afraid of him. He is he's vastly outnumbered, but also he's outpowered. Yes. And God's already won the battle against him. Amen? Amen. You know, I was really encouraged here. I just love James, and uh, we love Susan Beale and the praise team here. We really have a good warring spirit in this place. It's, that's getting more and more rare. We're getting more and more into Mamsie Pamsie Church all over, this, all over the nation and even around the world many times about feel-good church and what's wrong with your hair and what your, how's your dog doing, there's things of that nature. Um, God is into more than that. Amen? God is calling us into warfare. God's calling us into battling Satan because the battle's already been won. It's just time to enforce it. It's time to enforce what God's already done. And so praise God for Tree of Life Church, for one of the churches of many that are really taking it serious to battle the powers of darkness. And part of that is going to be engaging angelic powers also in your battle. I'm going to get involved in that in a little bit. So these demons and evil spirits, um, they coincide somewhat with the other two angels that are archangels called Michael and Gabriel. I've been told by theologians, I think it's um, Michael is over the nation of Israel. Gabriel's over the rest of the earth there. Lucifer was the other archangel because God normally does work in threes. There's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. There's the earth, moon, the sun. And there's, there's, also, there's all kind of threes throughout the entire Bible, three things that are very, very significant. And so it makes sense that God would choose Michael, Gabriel, Lucifer as three angels that are archangels of heaven. And so again, in verse 4, if you go on and read the rest of verse 4 of Revelation chapter 12, it gives you the reason or the purpose Satan's on the earth. What is Satan's vision? What's his mission statement? It says this, to devour the child, capital C, as soon as it was born. What does 2 Peter tell us, or 1 Peter? Satan goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is called as a demon, a devil, an angel, fallen angel, to devour everything he can that God makes and God loves. And he wants to attack a child more than a man because he's a coward. How many folks know that Satan attacked David against Goliath as a child? And he also attacked Moses as a baby. He attacked Joseph as a little boy. He attacked Jesus as a two-year-old. He always attacks a baby because he's a coward and wants to fight a baby and not a full-grown man. Amen? And so when a new business starts for you guys or a new baby's born in your house or anything new happens, if God birthed that, Satan's against that. And he'll try to attack it at a baby stage. Be aware of that. Amen? Don't give up in baby stages. Yes. Press on through. Keep on fighting. Get the word of the Lord. And let God even send his angels to help you out Amen. when Satan attacks the baby things of your life. Amen. If God birthed it, God will grow it up. But there will be conflict many times over babies and little things. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter, um, chapter 8, verse 38 says, For I am persuaded... Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. What that means there is not that they can separate us from Him, from God physically, but it means your love for God will not diminish even though these things come against you. That's what it's saying. Your love for God will not be conquered even though these things come against you. So read all of Romans chapter 8 to get context on that, and you'll realize God's talking there about spiritual maturity and about not giving up in evil times. You know, the folks of Kenya, they also, just like you guys as well, have gone through tremendous battles on, during COVID, after COVID, 
They've had the same dynamics we're facing ourselves and our nation here about needing revival and needing to have a, a fresh move of God take place among them. But the good news is that there's a total expectancy all over the world that God's about to break loose and send forth a great wave of refreshing, renewal, restoration, and revival like we've never seen before. You know, the guy named uh, Curtis Baker also uh, saw a stat there I never heard before. He said that over half the world will be under 35 years of age in only about five years. There's a huge need for children's evangelism and children's ministry all over the nation, especially India and especially China and nations like that. There are so many children that are being born and they need Christ as Savior. So number four is this. Angels are messengers of God. Uh, these three angels appeared to Abraham, the Bible says, to tell him that he and his wife would have a child while they were 100 years old and 90 years old. Three angels show up and verify that to him. They appeared to, to Lot also to warn him, get your family and leave Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to destroy this place. Get them and leave as fast as you can. They are messengers of God. An angel also prepared the way before the servant of Abraham to find a place or find a wife for Isaac. Let's read um, Genesis chapter 24, verse 7. It says, The Lord God of heaven took me from my father's house, from the land of my family, spoke to me and swore to me and said, To your descendants I give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from that place. You know, I praise God again. I, know I can say again with Cheryl for, for sure, and she'll testify herself also. She had angels helping her get from South Africa to Christ for the Nations supernaturally again and again. And while she was at CFNI with only $100 a month coming into her name, angels were putting bags of groceries on her front step, knocking the door and leaving with no sign of a human anywhere to be found. And so she saw that more than I did because she's spoiled and I'm not. <laughs> she, she gets special things given to her all the time. In fact, I'm telling you guys right now, just don't give her anything for a while. <laughs> give me some stuff. I, I'm getting nothing and she's getting everything. I'm getting a little tired of it, but I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, she deserves all that. Yeah, the spirit of jealousy. But um, who went on the cruise while I went to Africa? Who was, eat, who was eating cruise food while well, I was eating Ugali? Okay. No, drop that. But anyway, what I'm saying is God is a, is a messenger who helped even her get to the right place at the right time, went before her, went before me as well, got me at the right place at the right time to meet each other, and we're living happily ever after. Amen? God will prepare the way before you, whatever God's got for your job, your children, your life, your future, your retirement. God is sending angels before you, preparing the way before you. Amen? Amen. So sometimes doors need to shut, sometimes doors need to open, but God will show you which one should be there. We should also should pray for guidance before making big decisions. Those angels get activated by the prayers we pray. Number five is this, angels minister to the needy. Acts chapter 12, verses 5 through 7. Peter was therefore kept in prison. They were going to kill him the next day, if you read the whole story. But, but constant prayer, notice this, was offered to God for him by the church. Now, the common thread among all these activities I'm telling you about this morning is what? Prayer. Prayer activates the angels. Amen? We are going to be so surprised by what our prayers could have done when we go to heaven. I encourage you guys, do not neglect the place of prayer. Amen. Not to be religious, or not to be a person who's trying to earn your way to heaven. Your prayers activate angels and supernatural things start moving for you by your prayers. Yeah. You know, this again, just, just three days, two days, whatever, three days ago in, South, in uh, Kenya, we were on a very dangerous two-lane highway going 60 miles an hour. And um, our driver, Shim, with all of us in the team going back to Nairobi, tried to pass a big, what they call an 18-wheeler over there, going about 30, 40 miles an hour on a dangerous stretch of road with no shoulder, and a great big giant dump truck is coming right at us head on. And we made it by the skin of our teeth because you guys were praying, and we also, we prayed before that, the trip even took place. Amen? 
because that, that's about, that was the scariest moment I've had in my entire mission's life. And, about, and seeing a truck coming at us 50 miles an hour head on, it would have smashed us all over the road. And so, praise God, we made it, we're alive, and we're going to keep on going with the, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. But I'm telling you, prayer does make a difference. Yes. So moving along, what it says here, when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guard in front of the door were keeping him, or keeping the prisoner. So now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him. A light shone in the prison. He struck Peter on the side and raised him up and said, Arise quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. So praise God, an angel was sent by God while he slept. He was helpless, no way to escape, guards around him, chains on him. The prison uh, doors were shut closed, being guarded but God, by an angel, still leads Peter out, as only God can do. That shows you and I that even impossible things take place by angels that God brings to us. Angels can make folks go blind. He can make folks go to sleep. He can open up prison doors. They can do that because they're supernatural beings anointed by God. One more story with Curtis Baker before I close in a moment. He told us also, he said about two or three years ago, he was supposed to go to a ministry place, minister as a guest speaker, for a conference, and I needed a hotel room for the night, and the Holy Spirit told him, you need to start praying right now that angels get commissioned to go before you, or you won't find a hotel room in that city. He prayed. He said, I command the angels of God, go before me and find me a hotel room in Jesus' name. He goes to the place where he thought was reserved, and uh, when he gets there, they say, I'm sorry, sir, we gave you a room up. This place is booked up. There are no rooms anywhere in the city, as far as we know. He made another phone call, and I can't make a, I don't want to make a long story longer, but I just want to say that the bottom line was he finally went to another hotel. The manager overheard his conversation to the front lady de at the desk, who said, also, no room, no chance, no way. And as he walked in the parking lot, manager comes out behind Curtis and says, listen, sir, I know there's one room left you can have. And it gives him the finest room in the entire hotel, presidential suite, for the price of the cheapest room in the whole hotel. And he got a room that night. And that showed Curtis, and it should show you and I again tonight, or to this morning, show us today. When you pray, you really can start even commissioning angels to go before you in Jesus' name and start seeing things take place in your behalf. Amen? Amen. We are in a war right now. There will be struggles till Christ comes back, and wrestlings will take place. But God will see us through by His power and by His Spirit. If I can get some help here on the platform, um, if you want to have the entire praise team come back, you can. I think last week when Mike Hammond was here, he had the whole praise team come back to the platform. And uh, you guys sing another song of praise and worship to God. It's like God breathed on that, and God was moving with that. So let's even do that again, because the Bible talks about when two or three witnesses happening. Let's see if, if God wants to move again in a way that's going to be unique this morning. I really believe that God wants to bring some things in line, and He wants to release some things among us. So if we can get our, some of our guitars and our singers back up here again to take your places, your drums, thank you for that also. Um, we're going to be prepared here to sing and play in a moment. We will always need the supernatural power of God, though, working among us, as long as we're on this earth, because we're, we are fighting a supernatural war that has already been won. As I was praying about the service today, the Spirit of God was telling me to ask you guys the questions. Is there warfare in your house? Is there a lot of bickering, fighting, friction? Is there tension? Is there things going on that's strange in your home? Are your children being bullied at school? Are your children being picked on? Are your children going through depression, going through stress, and going through anxiety? What about upcoming governmental meetings that are going to happen in our nation, our city, our state? Can you believe God that God will take and commission angels to go before us and start setting things right in your house, among your children, and in our government as only He can do? You see, God can expose every realm of darkness. God can do that. He knows how to. But he's waiting for the church to pray that God may then commission angels. Amen? So I'm not saying this morning 
Let's start praying to angels. Let's keep on praying to Jesus and pray to God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Because the Bible says pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And, and they will command the angels to go with you. But at the same time, a new thing I heard from Curtis there that I want you to think about this as well. Sometimes the Holy Spirit may encourage you to start commissioning angels over your children at school. If your kid's being bullied, for instance, at school, start praying prayers like, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I commission warring angels to be over my child at school. I bind the spirit of violence, and those that are bullying my child, I say it shall cease and stop in Jesus' name. There's been times in my house when I've sensed demonic presence, demonic activity, Satan trying to attack us in some way, and I'll say, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I commission warring angels in this house. I declare this house belongs to God. It does not belong to Satan or demons. Demons, you have no place here. You have no room here. And I say these warring angels are against you, and they shall fight you, they shall attack you, and you shall be sorry you ever came in this place. So leave here in Jesus' name. When I pray prayers like that in faith, I have a peaceful night's sleep. I got a peaceful house. Even the dog's at peace. Amen? I'm telling you, God is a supernatural God. And I believe God does it also in governments, meetings coming up, elections happening, decisions being made in the highest realm. So you guys are up here just begin to pl just play like you're playing. Just, just play. The Spirit of God told me to take it and start walking through this sanctuary. And as I'm walking here, I think the Holy Spirit's going to show me some things He wants me to pray about over you folks. Because God cares about you. God loves you. God's with you. So, Father, even right here, and I'm sensing, Father God, a pool, a, a, a pool of water in this area, God, right over here. I'm just saying, Lord God, that pool of water grows deeper. I see silt, and I see things of inactivity in some individuals. But you want to dig out the silt, and you want to bring forth a deeper work. And so, Father God, all the folks in this area right here, I don't know who it is individually or in the corporate realm, but I say, God, that waters are going deeper, cooler, clearer in Jesus' name, and the silt is being removed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise you, God. Father, in this area over here, we just right now rebuke a spirit, God, of infirmity, and we praise you, God, you bring soundness and health, wholeness and life in Jesus' name. We rebuke, oh God, every disease, every sickness that tries to dwell upon anybody, God, in this area right now in Jesus' name. And we say the word of the Lord is going to be yes and amen for their bodies. They shall live out every day ordained for them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise you, God. Send forth, God, your word. Send forth your spirit, your life, oh God, upon this congregation. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Now, the Father of God, your Spirit of God is saying over in this area right here, there's a garment of praise or a spirit of heaviness. All things of depression, all things of heaviness is being broken and removed in the name of Jesus. There's coming forth life, there's coming forth laughter, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I just right now sent you a uh, contention coming against some folks in this area right here. Battles by other people, by social media, by family gatherings or workplace environments that are contentious. And I say, God, peace, be still. Peace, be still. In Jesus' name. Commission God, your angels, to fight in war for this people. In the name of Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. I'm sensing a warring spirit, God, among people in this area right here. Let it, God, increase. Let the warfare, God, through them increase. Increase their faith. Increase their revelation. Let them receive, God, wisdom and know what to pray, what to fight, and how to be specific in the name of Jesus. We praise you, God, and thank you. Your goodness, kindness, mercy, and love. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand to our feet, please. And let's uh, lift our hands to God and say, Father, I praise you right now that I have an angel that works on my behalf. Now, Lord, show me, oh God, what I should be doing myself. Say, 
make sure my angels are work, my angels are busy. My because I don't want to be unemployed. They don't want us to twiddle their thumbs. Me. They don't want to be bored. Like they don't want to be at work. They are made by you, God, to be messengers and servants of fire and flame. Moving, God, and working in behalf of this people. Now, Father, I show them what to commission, what to pray about, what to loose. Not just, so oh God, for their household, but for their children only, but also, God, their neighborhood, their city, their workplace, their nation, and the nations of the earth. And that God be released in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I'll tell you, God, telling us to pray together over this local church. Father God, we bless the Tree of Life Church. Angels of God in camp around this church, this congregation. Those who come in here are blessed. They shall receive God gladness and joy. They shall receive beauty for ashes. And they shall receive the garment of praise for the Spirit of God of heaviness. There shall be salvation. I praise you, God. Beauty for ashes. Healing, God, for sickness. The great exchange, O oh God, takes place. May faith, O oh God, increase in this church. May faith increase. Intercession, God, go forth. May the warring spirit, God, of this place, the sword be sharpened. Sharpened in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, for leadership that's here. Bind our hearts together. Give us, O oh God, one voice, one mind, one heart to do your will, Father, in Jesus' name. Father God, help us to be a blessing not just for this region, but also the nations of the earth. May that increase, O oh God, more and more. We thank and praise you, God, for this. In Jesus' name. Let our prayer partners go ahead and come to the front. They're here to pray also with you folks. I want you guys all to be able to, be able to have prayers of agreement take place. If you have a need for anything in your life on an individual basis, they're here to pray about that. Hope you receive something good today about angels. We don't worship angels. We don't try to see angels for just supernatural, just for entertainment purposes. But we have angels. They are around us. They're in your house. They're in your car. They see you every second, just like God does. And I'm saying be aware of that. Thank God for that. But let them also be at work to be commissioned. Amen. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you to Jacob. Is George Jacob over here? Jacob? Is it Jacob? There he is. He uh, did a tremendous uh, painting. I saw the painting before church here. I just finally got that book finished. Um, on, it was called Progressive Christian Life. Now it's called The Path of the Righteous for political purposes. Um, so he uh, did the front cover painting. And I appreciate that. It looks good to me. Very good. He did a tremendous job. This is a tremendous artist over here. And so that thing's coming together here. And uh, Ron Bishop on the strip here suggests I might go take, take it one more time through an editor to get it fine-tuned for the wording. Um, so I'm gonna, I may do that, but I want to get this. Just be praying that that thing gets out uh, soon. Amen. Praise God. Somebody's over here. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Father. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. This happy Yvonne Bennett. If you don't mind, just go ahead and come to the front and let you just dismiss us in prayer. God's doing a great work in this couple's life as well. God's calling this woman here to intercession and to prayer more and more. So just bless the congregation. You can pray in this prayer of dismissal for them. God bless you folks. Go to the picnic out there. Have a fun time with the horses and all the live animals and the bounce house. And I think it's not raining. The rain will stay off until 3 by faith. And again, if you need prayer, please come to the front and do that. This Wednesday night, we'll see you folks back who can come. And we just appreciate you being here today. May God bless each one of you this week. God has good things for you. Amen. We love God. We love you folks. Amen. God bless you, Yvonne. Father, we just come before you right now, Lord. We just, we just surrender ourselves. We surrender our minds and we surrender our bodies, Lord. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. Thank you for that fantastic word today, Lord, knowing that You've got us covered. You've got our back. You've got our front. You've got us side to side, Lord, with the angels that you have dispatched on our behalf, Lord. And we just come thanking you. 
thanking you, Lord, thanking you for your goodness, thanking you for your mercy and your blessings, Father. And we ask you, Lord, just to continue to protect us, O Heavenly Father. Continue to clear our minds and our hearts, dear Lord, and know that all that we do, we do to glorify and uplift you, Lord. We ask for a special blessing, special protection today, Father, as we leave this place, Lord, just thanking you, dear Heavenly Father. We're asking you for blessings this week, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your son. We thank you for salvation, Father. We thank you for clarity. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.